the bag, set them free in the bucket, and then we'll slowly add water from the tank to there. Welcome everyone back to Eat Sleep Reef. This week we have a ton of stuff to cover. Like I mentioned last week, we actually added fish to the quarantine. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna show you exactly what we added. This week we also add an on and off switch to the cabinet for the LEDs. So as soon as I open the cabinet door, they turn on. When I close it, they shut off. This is gonna prevent any algae growth that may occur from having too much lighting or just all in all the annoying lights that may be peeking through the cabinet so they can shut off and it should look very nice. Maybe it'll give an idea to add it to your reef tank. This week we also head down to pick up one of the containers for the mixing station. Sadly, they only have one. Because of the coronavirus, it, they've been very difficult to get. So it was either run the risk to wait for the second one to come in, but then th the one I got selling out, which would probably not be a good thing because at that point I may not get any of them. So I figured why not drive down? Believe it or not, it was about an hour and a half drive one way. We will go down, pick them up. So come on down with me. Let's get on with this update. I kid you guys not, Mexico is right there. That's the border. So we're, pro we're probably about 15 minutes away from Mexico. I literally traveled halfway across. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, my home's about a uh, about an hour away, but yeah, this place here is about, you know, 20 minutes away from Mexico. But we're here. All the storage tanks you would ever want. Yeah, all loaded, ready to go. So we got back home, got the tank fully cleaned up. I rinsed it out with a tap water and a hose. I did my best to clean the outside with one of these, uh, what are they called, the magic eraser sponges? Cause yeah, these things, when you get them, they're pretty beat up. So all there really is to do now is dry it. I'm gonna give it a rinse with RO water on the inside. I'll do that once I get it inside. I'll dry it off and then we should uh, be good at least for this one. Removed a few of the stickers that I didn't like. I really only left the brand. I got it fully dried up, made obviously room for it here. <laughs> Luckily my measurements were all right when I made the stand. It, it fits perfectly. It still leaves enough room for the pump to be in the middle and then obviously the other one here on the side. Now when I went they only had one in stock with the coronavirus. It's been very difficult to find these things. So I just took the gamble. I said, you know what, I'll pick one up in hopes that within a month they get another one in stock. I left them my number. So they give me a call as soon as they do get one. Worst case scenario, I'll order one online. I'll have to pay over a hundred bucks just in shipping. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, at this point, I've already committed to this brand, this size, this model. So it'd look really weird if I don't go with the same exact one. One thing I did notice now that I have it here on the stand itself. It's gonna be pushed back just a little bit further. But when you take into account the T and as well as the ball valve on the very end, it's actually gonna be extending quite a bit. There's a few things that obviously I don't want it to extend out that much. They provide you with a one inch uh, bulkhead. It's a little bit more industrial style bulkhead. This is the ones I tend to see like at Home Depot and Lowe's. They're good and all. The only thing I didn't like is that it's fully threaded all throughout. What that's going to mean is if I do, which I am going to do, PVC, I'd have to get an adapter, which it's already sticking out far enough this way. I don't want it to come out any further. So the, uh, the other option and what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this with a standard bulkhead that we're used to seeing in the aquarium industry. I'm going to do a slip slip. I'm going to install it and you can see I already have this one loosened up. So I think what there is to do now is go to the LFS. Fingers crossed, hopefully they have it. Let's just hope for the best. So it looks like they're gonna have them. Hopefully one of those is one inch. Hopefully they have two so we can set this thing up and get it going. There you guys go, two one inch. Just like I showed you guys earlier, I want slip on both sides uh, just so I don't have to get an adapter. And then it should all hook up well with the tank. Figured while we're here, why not? Why don't we check out some fish? Bunch of the rabbit fish. Bunch of tangs in here. Look at that nice little tang. Beautiful. Fox. Look at that really small stingray. That thing is 
probably like that. I mean, look at it, it's, it's about the same size as a yellow tang. Yeah, so, ooh, that's a really nice trigger. Clowns, fox face, mesotang, got a few of the damsels, starfish, cardinals. Ooh, that's a really nice 620. I'm still deciding if I'm gonna do a, um, a diamond. I really like the diamonds, they're always working hard, so I, I have a feeling I'm going to end up doing a diamond. We're for sure going to be doing a copper band. Of course we're going to doing, be doing a little dory or a blue tang. One fish I'm really excited to have is a cleaner rasp, believe it or not. I've never had one. They always look like they're really active. I'm for sure going to be doing a selfin. Yeah, wow. I see you have a pretty good selection today. Yeah, that's a good sized diamond right there. And I'm still deciding on the fox face, where, whether we do one of these or we do like a rabbit fish like uh, Inappropriate has. So still got to, uh, got to decide on that. I have the bottom bulkhead already attached. I removed the old one. It was actually very simple. I even wondered how in the heck do they actually tighten them. And the way they do it, they install all types of bulkheads backwards because there's no way for you to access the nut on the inside. That's what she said. But anyways, uh, there's no way to access the nut from the inside. So I always wondered how in the heck do they tighten these and the way they do it, you put whatever type of bulkhead you're using opposite of how you would use it. And then the nut is on the outside and then you're able to tighten it from there. So that was, again, that was straightforward. The next thing I need to do on these specific tanks and what I really liked about them, they also have a flat spot here on the top. Uh, which allows you to, in this case, since this is going to be the salt mixing station, uh, this one's going to have to have a, a piece of PVC going inside uh, so it's able to obviously mix the water so then we can mix the salt and then we should be able to be ready to use. So and I actually ordered a Uniseal. I have it right here. But then I was like, why in the heck am I going to use the, the Uniseal when there's a perfectly flat spot right here specifically designed for this? So... I said, you know what, while, we're on, while I was at the LFS, I said, you know what, I'm going to purchase a second one and then we should be able to install it. And luckily I used a, my drill with a hole saw right here and I was able to get that nice and open. I did get a, bits of scrap on the inside. You could see most of it fell on the outside, but I'll be sure to rinse that off. And then I think this, at least one of them should be complete. Top of the bulkhead is fully installed, nice and tight. I think for the mixing station, at least the first container, I'm gonna leave it here because I still have quite a bit more measuring to do. Again, since this is a salt one, there's gonna have to be a PVC going straight down, down to the middle, so it is able to mix the water. I'll probably do a video on that next week once I do get to it. It is finally raining here in California. You can see all the rain coming down, but, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy how so far it came out. I think next week we can jump into fully doing the PVC, showing you guys how I go about that, which PVC fittings I use, and maybe we can actually finalize this container because the RODI container, the only thing it's gonna have is a float, a float valve on the top, and that's gonna be it, nothing else. A few moments later. Let's get the fish out. I'm like a kid at a candy store. We are going to temperature acclimate them, let them sit there for a little bit, and then we'll dip them into the bucket and take it from there. That's been about 30 minutes. So we can take them out, set them inside the bucket, and then we're going to open up the bag, set them free in the bucket, and then we'll slowly add water from the tank to there. We can just set them free inside. So as you can see, these are freshwater mollies. For you guys wondering, probably watching this video saying, what's freshwater mollies in a saltwater tank? Yeah, absolutely. The main reason I'm doing the mollies is this tank just cycled. I want to make sure it has tons of beneficial bacteria. What better fish that eat a lot, poop a lot, graze on algae than these mollies? Not only that, but I did not, since I don't have medication here yet, I didn't want any to add any fish in here that were saltwater fish that potentially could have a disease. 
I don't know if you guys know, but mollies, they cannot, or any freshwater fish cannot transfer over parasites to saltwater. When those, let's assume these do have a parasite on them, as soon as they transfer over to salt, those parasites die. So the fish are essentially parasite free. Now, one comment I do want to make, and it, I would say do a, at your own discretion what I'm about to share with you. I've done a lot of more research on mollies and what is the proper method for drip acclimating them and transferring them over to saltwater. In the past, I've done it over five, six hours time, but recently I did a lot of research and reading and found out that there's a lot of guys that just temperature acclimate and believe it or not, they throw them directly in the salt water. And I know what a lot of you guys are saying. You're like, what, how in the heck can you do that? That's so cruel. All the guys that recommend that, they made an absolutely great point. And that's this, is we're aware brackish fish go from fresh to salt water, from salt to fresh. People were mentioning is these fish, when they're in the wild, they don't take six hours to swim their way to the salt water or vice versa. These fish, if they want to go in the salt water, guess what? They swim straight into the salt water at whatever salinity that is, and it's a done deal. Same as if they want to go to the opposite end. If they want to come back to fresh water, they don't take full six hours to come back. They just swim to fresh water. So that being said, these fish in the wild, generally they transfer from salt to fresh, fresh to salt within minutes time. They don't take six, 10, 20, 30 hours to do it. And when I read that, I was like, you know what? That makes perfect sense. So for today, I guess more for peace of mind, I'm going to drip acclimate them for probably 10, 15 minutes, uh, and then we're going to put them in. And again, if you're that person that says, no, I still want to do it over a long period of time, by all means do so. Again, my research showed that there's tons of people that literally, as soon as their temperature acclimated, they'll grab them and throw them into the saltwater tank. So I got my trusty cup. I'm going to be adding some salt water. Bye-bye parasites. All the parasites are gone. And again, one of the main reasons I really love using mollies to cycle reef tanks like I've done in the past, when you add these fish, these guys will be eating within the first five minutes of you throwing them in the tank. Not only do they eat very quickly, but they eat like absolutely pigs. So more poop, more ammonia, Generally speaking, I feel it's going to add a better beneficial bacteria in this reef tank. It's going to seed all the stuff in there a lot better. So what we're going to do, I'm going to wait a few more minutes. I'll grab another cup full and then I'll add a little bit more. And then I'll show you guys how we put them in the tank. All right, so I've done a total of two uh, cups and it's been what, maybe eight minutes time. The fish don't show any sign of stress when I add the salt or the salt water in this case. I think they should be ready. Hopefully everything I read online was correct. I mean, we're, we're, if I see them have any issues, I'll can throw them back. We'll observe them here a little bit. Any heavy breathing or anything of that sort? No, they look, yeah. I'll leave this water here. For any reason they start showing any weird signs, I can put them back. Yeah, this one seems a little bit more curious, but as you guys can see, they sh are showing no signs of being stressed out at all. They're swimming normally, they're breathing normally. So there you go, I guess in the future, uh, I know I used to read that you had to acclimate these guys for six, eight, 10, I mean, I even heard 24 hours. But as you guys just saw, two couples of this within about eight minutes and they're very happily swimming around. I can't wait for these guys to hopefully help get the tank really established with more beneficial bacteria so we can start adding the main fish to the system and start quarantining the fish that are gonna be going into the display. One other thing I did pick up, this lid by Aquion, it's a 24 by 12 hinge glass top. So a lot of you guys know when you have a tank, rimless or anything without a lid on it, and especially when you have a fan, you're gonna have quite a bit of evaporation. So I went ahead and purchased this glass top, not only for the evaporation, mollies aren't known to jump, but when I do get fish that are known to jump out, this is certainly gonna come in handy as we can put it in and not risk losing any fish. A few moments later. Here are the light switches I ordered from Amazon. They're very straightforward. You just hook up the positive wire 
one in here and one in here and then you tighten it down with the screw and then when the door opens it connects both of them obviously internally thus allowing current to pass thus in my case allowing the leds to turn on when it comes in it breaks a circuit so no power is able to pass and obviously in my case no leds turn on you got the mounting screws. When you're mounting these, it's not super critical exactly where you put them. You just wanna make sure that the action is actually being triggered and it's getting the right amount of throw. So it's not either turning on or off when you don't want. So I guess one of the easiest ways would be to butt it up right here. Obviously get the right spacing and then uh, screwing it down. I kinda don't want the wire running. I already have the wire you could see here cut it's actually ready to be hooked up but i don't want the wire having to come all the way to here i want it to be a little bit more hidden back in this area so i'll probably end up mounting it either here yeah here i don't think it's going to work so it's going to have to be mounted right there so whenever the door closes it actuates it and on and off also it's going to be the shortest amount of run for the cable that i've already pre-wired and it's ready to accept this so I cut back a little bit of the wire to expose it, inserted it through the hole, and then tightened with the small screws on either side. They also come with these caps. You can see you can insert it on the side so it leaves the wire or the screw covered. And then tug on it a little bit to make sure you tighten it correctly and they can go ahead and actually mount it. For those who follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen me post. And long story short, I ended up trading my XR30 Blues for the Pros. Main reason I did that, as you guys know, I make a lot of YouTube videos, I take a lot of pictures. A lot of the heavy blues that a lot of any LED throws out, the cameras absolutely hate them, both for pictures and for video. The XR30 Pro has a few more, actually, warm whites, which the blue doesn't. So I figured this LED would be a better combination for me specifically. Why? Because I make so many videos, take so many pictures. So I ended up trading all three of the XR30 uh, blues for pros. You can see them right here. Essentially, they look identical. The only difference, these don't have the anodized blue rim. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the same light. A few different LEDs than the XR30 blue. Uh, I'll cover that once I do set the lights up, once we have them over the tank. But I'll be sure to give you guys an update on that. Believe it or not, I received some great news this week as well. I don't know, this week has been a really good week. The 8020 mount that I've been waiting for for close to two months, guess what? It shipped two days ago. I got the shipping notification. It's said to arrive this coming Thursday, so about four, I think four or five days away. As soon as that arrives, I'm gonna do my best to get that assembled. And next weekend, I should be able to finally bring the tank mount it on the stand, do the plumbing, and probably have water in it within the next week and a half to two weeks. I'm really hoping for that. So I got a lot to do. I'm gonna do my best to get all that done, take my time, make sure it's done correctly. So I think a lot of you probably wanna see the light I added. So if you open this door, nothing's gonna happen because the switch is connected uh, to this side here. So when I open it, you're able to see the switch here, power on, power off. Okay, so power on, and then here you'll see the soft close, shut it off. Yep. So it's very simple to do. Uh, just like I showed you guys earlier, I mounted it here. When you are mounting this, all you're doing, you're interrupting the red power wire, uh, running it through the switch. So the switch becomes a circuit. When it's pushed in, circuit's broken. When it's pushed out, circuit's created, so power's able to run through it. But other than that, it was very simple, very straightforward. I think if you guys maybe want to bling out a little bit your cabinet, want to bring it a little bit more to life, you can certainly add this mod. It's very simple. For you guys that are wondering this switch, where you can get it, I will have a link in the description. So be sure to click down below. Not only will I have the switch, if you guys missed Last week's video where I added the LEDs, I'll also have a link to those LEDs so you can check them out. Guys, I think this is gonna conclude this week's episode. 
Hopefully I didn't bore you guys. If you guys actually stayed to the end, leave a comment down below letting me know you watched to the very end. Other than that guys, I'm gonna leave this video here. I have tons of stuff to get done. I have to finish the plumbing for the water mixing station. I still am gonna have to get the 8020 mounted when it arrives next week, as well as start doing the plumbing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Luckily, I'm ready. I think we're all ready to finally get this tank going. So I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. If I earned your subscription, please be sure to subscribe. If you are subscribed and you haven't hit that notification bell, hit that notification bell so you're kept up to date as soon as new videos are released. So I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.